those words. Those words. Bring it. Welcome, gold to the brand new here of Paramoto. And with that, the 2023 season comes to an end. <laughs> like I was being dumb. <laughs> Stupid. We're ready, but we need one more thing. Yes! Right, we need that. Yes. But welcome back to Salt Lake City, Utah, where we are going to go for a rip with Ghost around the Great Salt Lake. Woo! Let's go do it. PPG3 training. PPG3. PPG3. PPG3 class. We've just been kind of advancing our skills to make us better pilot. Just wanted to progress in the sport and really just be a safer pilot. It's really helped me progress my skills. I'm just stoked to get down here and kind of dial things in. Landings were the thing I wanted to work on. I mean, I land consistently. I don't go down on my knees. Like I run them out, but they were a bit abrupt. And it's kind of hard to see that perspective when it's just you out there and, and what am I doing wrong? And it was a great time, you know, it's a great environment. And it's cool to actually fly with other people for the first time in six months. The, the sunrises down here were gorgeous. It's, it's amazing, like almost sad to go up. When we have a PPG3 class, it's definitely a bit more of a relaxed environment, right? You've got students coming in for the class who are already flying. They've already established that their skills are good enough to be here for a PPG3 class. So it's a bit more relaxed, more fun environment. We get to joke around. Being that it's not two weeks long, it, we did a class in three and four days. You get to know the guys a little bit quicker. You get to practice those skills all out in the field as a group. And we all get to laugh together and, and grow from there. It's, uh, it's an enjoyable time hanging out with these already pilots and getting to expand their skills. Oh, hi. <laughs>
boat stack I think this that you've the, ever done? Yeah, definitely. It Hell might be the first yeah. paramotor boat stack ever. That was one of the most epic things I've ever been a part of. Those formations were the coolest thing I've ever seen. What say you about the weather? It's going to break. It's going to be beautiful. This is a cloud hugging, cloud kissing day. And I never wanted gravity to pull this hard. If you never come around, how we ever going to be? If you're always on the ground, then you never going to see. What up, Sandy? Take my time to bring it in for a little week pop. So we pop action. Slice through these two clouds. Uh, you were supposed to fly with Sandy, I thought. I was supposed to fly with Sandy, and now Sandy is gone. She has disappeared. Her van's there, but we take it she went to work. Work? We were up there flying, having a good time. We're working. We're, yeah, You're we're working. working away. I don't know where she, what she's doing. What, what kind of work is she doing? Where were you? What do you mean? You just left us up there. I'm sorry. I was flying around, and all of a sudden, weren't there anymore. Oh, I'm sorry. You're lost without me? <laughs> I only got one wing buff. The pond is a black hole. Yeah. It's been it sucking people, people in. <laughs> every time. Have we known anybody that's gone in the water? So I, I didn't know anybody. Do you know anybody? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I did have a moment when I might have got a bit excited and not realized how much fuel was in my parameter. So, uh, yes, classic rookie error, guys. So, always do your pre flight inspections and make sure how much fuel you have because um, otherwise uh, you could get wet. Don Jordan, and I live in Palm Bay, Florida. I had my first flight when I was 62, and I've been flying 20, almost 26 years. Hey, I'm Mac Hodges. This is uh, my field. Basically a model airplane field and some full scale, but now, the last few years, it's become a paramotor field also, and we're having a good time. This is a called a GOAT. It was designed by a guy in uh, San Diego, and it was a ultralight glider. Wasn't meant to be powered, but around here we have no cliffs to fly off of. It flies about the same speed as you guys, probably 25, maybe 30. That's, it's, it's a good flying little airplane. I'll probably try to get it out tomorrow and fly it. So. It's a good event, it's an awesome turnout, and uh, everybody seems to be uh, behaving themselves, and uh, it's all good, all good.
spreading my father's ashes. He was a Bad Apple original number 24, and Hodges Field is one of the OG places for the Bad Apples to fly, and this was one of his favorite fields. So one of his wishes was to have his ashes spread here. So me, my Uncle Tim, who's his identical twin brother, and the group of us Bad Apples are gonna go up and honor him. It went pretty good. Uh, we just wanted to fly and have as many bad apples as we could at the time to represent all the bad apples. Uh, even though it was my brother's ashes, it was for him, but for all the bad apples that we've lost. Uncle Tim both spread some of my dad's ashes, and that was a great memorial. Yeah, I'm happy. Thank you guys for being here. You're welcome, girl. I appreciate it. Great. I love my friends. You did great. Dave Armstrong, 50 years old, from upstate South Carolina. History in aviation, very little. I always wanted to be a pilot since a kid, you know, the whole fighter pilot thing, top gun. So going from ground zero to flying in less than two weeks, that, it's, it's awesome. <laughs> when you've got keep them all back, tie that wing up for me. Run, run, hold the maze. Run, hold the maze. Touch power, touch power, touch power, touch power. Hold the maze, release, touch power. Lean back a little bit. Lean back. I'm power. I'm power. Lean back. Give the power. Give the power. Oh my goodness. Tell us what you think. <laughs> those words, those words, a tandem is one thing, but when when you're doing it, you're flying. <laughs> I ran into the sky and I landed and didn't die. Motor. Let's go and see what this place is all about. I have sensory overload because I just want to look at everything and touch everything and buy everything. Like, oh, this is so cool. I could take a nap in this thing. Officially, we're going to have to go to Utah and learn how to paraglide. <laughs> They're a little tall for me. This right here, this gentleman is where I bought my first Solomon shoes. These things are so awesome. Their warranty is the best. If you foot drag too much, they stop becoming waterproof. Doesn't matter, they'll give you a free pair. The best. This way, guys. Let's follow the leader. Let's follow the leader. It's insane. <laughs> Look at this. The first time I saw this, I was just like, you've got to be kidding me. <laughs>
right, guys. Day two, we're at Kipikara. We found Johnson, which is awesome. Bonjour. Love seeing more and more of our American friends discovering how awesome this event is. I actually get to see friends from all over the world here, which is really exciting. And seeing more Americans start to show up, I think just immense how incredible this place is. It's just incredible with people, incredible flying, and lots of new things to explore. Well, it all started with a dream. I'm sure everybody who wants to fly had these uh, uh, dreams of flying when they were a kid. Of course, mine was Superman. Uh, I used to bounce around the couches with a, my little Superman underwear outfit on and a pillowcase cape. And Mom always used to say, stop jumping on the couch. Mom, I'm not jumping, I'm flying. I have some power, good. Get under it? Yeah, start adding more power. That way a little bit. Adding more power. All right, smooth the full. Squeeze your hand all the way and run. All the way, buddy. Run, 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 run. And That was the start of my flight dream. And then, you know, back then, we didn't have YouTube. And I remember in high school, I tried to draft out a little pedicopter with my Huffy bicycle. Fast forward to getting out of the Marine Corps and uh, I transitioned in back into civilian world security in the casinos in Las Vegas and uh, one of my uh, fellow uh, security officers was a retired CHP officer. He flew paramotors and he invited all of us to come on out and get a ride and sure enough, I did it. That was probably about 20 years ago. It was great. Got two trips up, two flights up and had, that's when the dream began. You know, I had a vision, had a goal. I want to do this. Just relax that upper body. Look at me. Right now, move it away. Hold it. Hold it. Good. Slowly release. Kill the motor. Feet apart. Hand. Wait. Wait. Pressure. All the way down. And run. Simply run. Turn and kite. Turn and kite. Turn and kite. My man. Really amazing how, how it all comes together. And then to finalize this, I'm a Marine. I served in the United States Marine Corps for four years and uh, got out in 2000. And the catch for me here with Aviator Paramotor School was it's a boot camp style training session. And I'm like, wow, sweet. When I, right back to boot camp. I was like, I get to go to boot camp again. You know, we all talk about that. Us Marines talk about wanting to go back to boot camp again. I'm going to tell you what, this was a freaking two week boot camp and it was awesome. Awesome, awesome. Okay. How was it? Congrats. Welcome to Man, the sky. Freaking awesome, dude. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. There's nothing like it. There's nothing like it. But we live in this time, in this era of this planet, of billions of years. We live in this tiny little sand grain where we get to put this freaking thing on and look like a bird. We get to fly like a bird. Who ever had that opportunity in any history? The Wright brothers didn't even have that. Can you imagine if they were alive today? Oh my gosh, wow. Everybody has dreams, man. But you gotta make them come true. Wow. <laughs>got a lot of weight on your back but i'm sure that took a lot of weight off oh my gosh yes, yes it did absolutely I'm, I'm i'm emotional right now and i don't get emotional as i am right now man let me compare the two the solo training to the environment training our solo was more of a laid-back opportunity i thought that was going to be for me but it just wasn't at that time i needed something bigger a, a group of people you know i needed more instructors around me more students around me so i can see more of what was going on that was the most important thing you know i mean my first instructor is freaking great at what he does man but just that solo just it wasn't for me and to come into this environment to be able to fall into something and know the, the size of it that was important for me well the know. significance of today is i just flew my own motor and my own wing. That was a really good catch for me to, you know, in my reviews and stuff of Aviator Paramotor to see that this is a boot camp style. And, and they push you, man. They're not like our old drill instructors. They're drill instructors in a new way, you know. They want us to succeed. They did too back in the Marines. They want us to succeed here, you know. So that was that. And um, <laughs> guess what today is? Today is 10 November, 2023 the Marine Corps birthday, and that's a big thing to us. So here I am graduating boot camp again. Hoorah! <laughs> to all you veterans out there, you coming home from wherever you're coming home from, man, listen, it might be hard, it might not be, but if you really wanna do something with your life and not go down a negative path, I mean, this is the thing to do right here, man. This is the thing to do. 
Let the sky carry you home. All right? Simplify.